Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here, back through Daily Crypto News and Analysis. And today we're going to be talking about Zinfin Network, aka XDC. So let's just dive in. Let's talk about a few things. So uh, similar to my other videos, I hope everybody has a great holiday today. Hope everybody's you know having a nice day or a nice night wherever you guys are. Um, you know, in regards to the market, we haven't you know really kind of done too much, not expecting too much. You know, this video is going to go up a little bit later, but um, you know, prices most likely won't change too much. I might be wrong. Um, XDC has been in a nice little uptrend. You know, nothing too impactful. Um, but uh, yeah, today we actually have a few things to talk about actually in regards to price and in regards to, you know, some past, uh, you know, things that have happened and why I've always said like, listen, when we look at XDC and we look at something like XRP, um, I kind of compare these two a little bit just because XDC reminds me of, uh, you know, 2017, 2018 XRP, where, you know, we did see a little bit of a time frame where a lot of individuals were just like, you know, this is a scam. This thing isn't going anywhere. It hasn't done much. It's, you know, just, it's basically like a dead token, right? That's what a lot of people kind of look at XTC as. But those that are doing their research, understanding utility gems, understanding where we are basically headed in regards to like digitization of some very large, not only industries, but also, you know, just markets in general, you know, it is pretty interesting to watch XDC also kind of be incorporated and Zenfin pretty much expand around that area as well in regards to like digitization. So let's just dive in. Let's talk about a few things. So first off, I do have three tweets from uh, CryptoNair D. Uh, definitely, you know, check him out if you guys haven't already on uh, Twitter. But we do see XDC, Andre Kasterman, traditional database technologies are not able to handle the surging volume of digital payments, transaction processing chain, and being independent as a technology, you know, plug in and, uh, sorry, plug into all of these systems such as middleware or, you know, network interface such as, you know, Swift. Listen closely to this of the transaction across a number of systems. So the technology that has emerged over the years is really about being able to act as an information system mm. on your transaction processing chain and being independent as a technology from existing systems, not replacing the core banking, not replacing the sanction screening, but really being able to plug into all of those systems, including the middleware, the network interface, like a Swift interface, and being able to uh, know at any point in time what is happening on a particular flow right. and spot the issues, uh, again, to report to the chief operations who is concerned about what is going wrong and report uh, to regulators to make sure you comply yeah. with regulatory requirements around uh, uh, transaction reporting. And over the years, we see this, this t technology being able to address a lot of additional uh, use cases like feeding a portal for self-service, open banking, or feeding uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning use cases. Mm -hmm. So more and more this technology has to be independent, highly specialized to, make, uh, to track the, the flows and the transactions, right. and also highly performant. This is where uh, traditional database technologies are not able to handle the surging volumes of digital payments. So yeah. specialization is in this function is key. And, and, and technologies have evolved over the years and, and, and banks need it sure. because they, they have to yeah, keep a legal archive for years. They have to, to report instantly. And, you know, he basically just talks about like how, you know, these technologies, digital technologies, or, you know, digital assets in general are uh, basically disrupting not only like the traditional banking scene, but also like many areas around the, tr you know, traditional, you know, markets and industries. Um, because again, this like technology goes beyond the scope of just like, you know, scalability and things like that. It also allows for like traceability, transparency and things like that around a large portion of these markets that are, you know, hit massively by, you know, inefficiencies around just like the legacy system. Now, also, we actually have over here, um, you know, XDC document digitization, ITFA, DNI initiative, phase one and two, China Systems Integrates, Anisio's Trace, original uh, document, you know, technology, XDC tokenization infrastructure. Listen, or not listen, look closely at this. Um, the video down here is actually what I do want us to listen <laughs> in on. Um, you know, one second, let me actually play it. It's only 49 seconds long. Listen closely. This is China Systems' view on Anisio Time Solution. I think, though, is uh, everyone talks about digital transformation. It's going to be a very long... It is a little bit low. I do apologize. I can't control that. 
period of transformation. So that means there has to be something in between. If we can reach that goal quickly, all the better, but the reality is there are many trade initiatives. Yesterday, uh, we heard about the new initiative at BAFT, about the new set of trade data, and almost every week I hear about the new initiative defining new standards in trade. So it's clear that the challenges in the short term are only going to increase. And that's why I believe that probably the ideal solution of all the solutions in the market currently provides the most natural path for transformation from physical documents to digital trade. And they basically just said like Anigio's process is the best solution that they have seen from taking, you know, just the regular documents to the digital phase from, you know, again, traditional physical documents. Um, and here we have it um, in regards to the Anigio, you know, breakdown in regards to their technology. Um, and then we do see over here, this is Andre Kasterman up here talking in regards to an ITFA uh, sort of breakdown. I'm um, talking about the DNI initiative here, collaboration amongst, you know, fintechs and advisors. We do see electronic signatures, original document technology, uh, core TF, you know, technologies, document processing uh, solutions. And then we do see XDC at the center point for tokenization, uh, which we have seen in regards to like, you know, trade Finex or, you know, trade tech. Um, and then we do see like the advisors at the bottom. So again, in regards to the entire food chain process, like, you know, XDC is definitely, you know, at the pivotal uh, moment as a tokenized uh, bridge, you know, asset, if you will. Um, yesterday, we talked about how it is a liquidity bridge um, in regards to trade finance, which I also do think that is uh, essentially the gist of it, um, which is pretty large at scale, especially if you look at the amount of volume um, and traction around like, you know, trade finance itself. Um, and also we do see over here, you know, XDC, the ITFA, DDoC, you know, specifications, um, existing trade networks, ecosystem, SWIFT, e uh, EBIX, FTP, etc. And of course we do see, you know, Zinfin, an ITFA member with regulated entities and SG and UAE provides an advanced tokenization and liquidity sourcing platform in support of trade finance and stable coins to bring retail and institutional liquidity to alternative lenders and traditional banks. Zinfin is also based on hybrid blockchain technology. And, uh, you know, again, you do see like this is the main use here, tokenization and liquidity source. This is why I've said like Zinfin, aka XDC, is pretty large within its own role. Um, and we do see over here the DDoC specifications. Um, this does break down the entire, you know, way that this actually kind of works, the what, how and why. Um, all centered around, of course, efficiencies in regards to, you know, tokenization and digitization of, you know, these yeah, I know that like this actually doesn't look like much when we look at like documents around like trade finance. Um, and I think that like, a again, a lot of people think that like this isn't really that large of a scope. Um, but this is, you know, trillions and trillions of dollars in regards to like disruptions, aka $19 trillion in, you know, specific. So again, very large use case. I know it doesn't seem like much, it kind of doesn't really look like much. Um, but just know that there is a very, very large name centered around this. Um, and also we do see her over here in regards to those very large names, uh, check out the big names alongside Impul and the XTC network. And here we have it, uh, Treasury Tech Update, NatWest, BNY Mellon, Barclays, Oracle, and more. We do see NatWest you know, Group, BNY Mellon, uh, Barclays, City, Stripe, Oracle, Vodafone, and then we do see down here, you know, Impul, XTC network, Finostra. Can't even believe that they didn't under, you know, score, uh, you know, Finostra here either. I mean, like 8,900 plus customers and clients in regards to like the, you know, uh, financial area. Very, very large name. Um, and then, of course, we also do see MasterCard down there as well. Very, very large name sitting right next to, of course, Zinfin and, uh, you know, Impul. So, again, pay attention to that. Now, the moment that you've all been waiting for. So here is a historical snapshot from um, January 7th. Now, I don't believe um, a lot of people really kind of pay attention to, you know, past uh, sort of things, but this is one that I actually want to, you know, focus on. So not only do we see X XRP being the second token here in regards to market cap rankings, um, but you also do see the price per XRP and the circulating supply, the circulating supply at that moment in time for um, XRP was about $38.7 billion. Um, you also do see, you know, the price per XRP and you also see the market cap. Now, 
You might be wondering, why is that even important? Well, we're going to be talking about it. So let's dive in on it to XDC. This is why I've said XDC is the modern day XRP. With everything that we've just talked about, the utility around XDC should not be ignored at all. I think that it has a very, very bright future ahead of it. But going off of $130.8 billion market cap for XRP, comparing that to XDC, it's actually quite interesting. Why? Because XDC would actually be worth almost $10. This would be an upside of 375x. Now, do I think that this is going to go to $130 billion market cap like, you know, anytime soon? Um, I could see it by roughly the 2024 to 2025 timeline. Uh, which again is a very good timeline for something like this to actually happen. You might be wondering why do I think that it's worth $130 billion in market cap? Is it just because of XRP? No, I think that it's actually worth this because we have been seeing a very you know large spotlight being put on ISO tokens, um, utility grade tokens, you know, regulations is being a huge talk right now. And I do think that in regards to like the utility around XDC, the market that it is going after and uh you know the strives that it has been taking in regards to like the last couple of weeks months and even you know the last three years um xdc has come a long way uh don't forget the fact that you know again in regards to like tokenomics xdc has stronger tokenomics over xrp could i see like for example like we'll talk about like a three dollar and thirty eight cent um you know XRP or, or X, XRP uh, just a three dollar XDC in general um forty one point three billion dollar market cap still a hundred and nineteen X opportunity and this is in my opinion very likely to happen um you know in the near future so again we have to wait on this you know to me it is you know sort of an area that I like to focus on. Um, in regards to like price per these tokens because like again like Zinfin is going after a 19 trillion dollar market and when we look at XDC's utility case around tokenization and a liquidity source I just don't see you know a, a day in the future where XDC isn't at some point in time trading at over three dollars plus in value per XDC. Um, I would love to hear your guys' thoughts on this as well, because to me, like, I think that this is, you know, something that is possible. So let me know what you guys think about this. Um, with that being said, I hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you guys did, definitely leave a like, subscribe, turn notifications on if you guys want more free content. You guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and join the free Discord down in the description below. As well as up to you all, have a beautiful day or a beautiful night wherever you guys are on this beautiful world. This has been Nick. Peace out, guys.